The Gulf of Aden washes up on the shores of Somalia. It's a vital waterway for the world economy. A great deal of the oil, affordable clothes, food and electronics we buy pass through the Gulf. But shipping in these waters is becoming a dangerous business. The pirates are paid hundreds of millions in ransom, but are they the ones who are cashing in? Civil war and famine have been fueling Somali piracy for more than a decade, making many turn to the sea in search of the source of income. International naval forces have been stepping up patrols in the area, but here they are behind enemy lines. The place has turned into a navigator's nightmare and the pirate's paradise. We haven't kidnapped anybody. We're being accused of piracy, but it's something we haven't done. Actually, it's us who've been forcibly detained and kept here in this prison. We are just Somali fishermen. That's all we want to say. End of April 2009, the Russian destroyer, Admiral Pantelev, captured a suspected pirate ship in the Gulf of Aden, off the coast of Somalia. This is a Russian ship, Russian warship. If you understand me, I'm here. 29 people from Iran, Pakistan and Somalia were detained. Among them, this man, Osman Yosef Said, would later claim he had nothing to do with piracy. Because of the legal complexities involved, only a handful of pirates have faced trial in recent years. Yemen is among the few countries that have decided to try Somalis for piracy. Osman Yosef and his friends are now waiting for their day in court. And of course, it's in their best interest to deny everything. Colonel al Barati is the head of the Yemeni Coast Guard in the district of Aden. The territory they patrol stretches about 500 kilometers along the coastline. Nevertheless, they try to respond to all distress calls. When we search any boat outside, uh, we, we had to go their paper. If he has not paper, it means we have to deal with him very seriously and carefully. So this is what happened. And uh, if you search any boat, find weapon, find ladders, five robes, five, it means he's 100% uh, pirate. The Yemeni Coast Guard has 25 patrol vessels, but only one of them is equipped with a mounted machine gun. It's hardly enough to repel numerous pirate attacks in the Gulf, so they rely heavily on help from international naval forces. Besides, the colonel says many former Somali naval officers are fighting on the pirate side, and they are not an easy rival. Somali shore is the longest shore in Africa, which is about 3,700 kilometers. And the shore, it's uh, uh, very rich with the uh, fish. So uh, the, uh, the fishery company started to, uh, to come to the, the, the area and uh, to fish there. It's affected the Somali uh, fishermen, and they start to have a small boat and a very uh, ordinary Kalashnikov to uh, kick these uh, ships from the area. This is the only sophisticated hospital in a nearly 700-kilometer radius, and Somali pirates are frequent patients here. Most doctors are from Russia or Ukraine, and every day is a challenge for them. It's a gunshot wound, so I was glad to see that the bullet entered close to the shoulder blade and hit his shoulder but didn't strike his lungs or any other vital organs. I really feel pity for these guys, not for their country, not for their way of life, just for the people. 
He will live, and he will live well. Since the collapse of the central government in 1991, Somalia's ongoing civil war has caused more than 300,000 deaths. But the port city of Basasu in Somalia's breakaway state of Pantland is a relatively peaceful place. It's an important sea hub for smugglers, drug and human traffickers, and anyone with piracy in mind. Vladimir is a professional surgeon. He came here from Kiev nearly a year ago in search of better pay. Since then, he's been literally confined to the hospital building. Doctors stay in the hospital and rarely leave it during the daytime. In this city there is really no need to buy anything, because there is nothing to buy apart from this local drug called Chud. It is sold on the streets, but I don't take it. A trip to the outside world implies some kind of necessity, some need, but I don't need what they have to offer. Just a couple of hundred nautical miles off this coast lies one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world. Hundreds of ships been hijacked and dozens of crew members held to ransom in these waters. Each year more than 20,000 vessels choose the Gulf of Aden as the quickest trade route between the east and the west. The only way to bypass the area is by taking a far longer trip, going round Africa via the Atlantic Ocean. This alternative route may cost ship owners millions as it takes up to three more weeks at sea. So they are pressed to send their vessels through the pirate infested Gulf and some of the ships don't get through. It's been one and a half days of storm for us in the Indian Ocean. By the time we entered the Gulf of Aden, the storm subsided. So we put up an additional watch to keep track of the waters around us. But unfortunately, that didn't help. The German-owned merchant ship Lemon Timber was seized by pirates off the Somali coast in May 2008. A heavily loaded vessel carrying steel from China to Germany. It was only one and a half meters above water. And it was an easy prey for the hijackers. They just jumped aboard. The 16 crew taking hostage included a Russian captain. We've been guarded by pirate groups from three Somali clans. One clan treated us with respect. The others, though, were trying to humiliate us. In fact, they had fights amongst themselves. The Somali pirates have surprised everyone by their relative non-violence. For Somalis, it's like a well-run industry. Nothing personal. I get my money, and I let you go. Vadim Mamontov is an inspector for the International Transport Workers Federation at the port of the Russian enclave of Kaliningrad. He also presides over the Russian Maritime Trade Union, and he has heard quite a number of hostage stories in his career. According to the sailors who've been captured by the pirates, the hijackers were turning the cabins upside down. They were smashing computers, and they described them as people who barely know how to use a cell phone. But to keep track of the ship's course, to find and intercept it, to carry out that kind of maneuver, this takes a lot of skills. And I don't think these thugs can pull that off on their own. Nobody in the Gulf of Aden is 100% secure against pirate attacks. The Gulf is home to an abundant fishery. But sometimes even Yemeni fishermen may become an easy catch. Ahmed is a second-generation fisherman. Over the course of his 15-year career at sea, he's encountered pirates only once. But once was enough to keep him from fishing far off the coast ever again. Five months ago, I encountered pirates at sea. When they got closer on their big boat, they started to point guns at me. I was afraid they'd kill me, but they made me get into a different Yemeni boat, so I did. It was the last time I saw my own boat. They've taken it away. The pirates often attack Yemeni fishermen, most of whom don't leave long enough to see their boats stolen from them. But the boats are a crucial link in the pirates' assaults on bigger vessels. They are used as a cover. Pirates float around in the high seas pretending to be fishermen. And they strike when the ship's crews least expect it. Some 400 kilometers north of the troubled gulf is the Yemeni capital Sana. It lies in the heart of highlands on a plateau more than 2,000 meters above sea level. Ancient city of nearly two million people is sharing its nowadays problems with the rest of the country. 
a staggering unemployment rate, drug abuse, separatists and al-Qaeda terrorists. The country faces a lot of challenges and the Somali refugee issue is one of them. The number of registered refugees now is over 100,000, but in actual fact, the number of refugees is probably over six or 700,000. Uh, this creates for us a social and economic uh, health problem, a uh, tremendous challenge for a poor country. This is Basatim refugee camp. It's a slum area near Aden that has become home for up to 14,000 Somalis. With refugees traveling frequently between Basatin and another camp at Haras in search of jobs, it's difficult to pinpoint the exact number of people living here. They live in harsh conditions, but many of them say it's better here than at home in war-torn Somalia. This 35-year-old Somali lost half of her family to civil war. She came to Yemen by boat crossing the Gulf of Aden 15 years ago, got married here, and four of her children have never seen their homeland. I live a difficult life. Look at my house. You see how we live here. Sometimes when I get a chance, I work for cleaning services. My husband, when he wasn't sick, used to wash cars. We barely make enough to pay for rent, utilities and food. When the Somali refugees first come ashore, there are reception centers all along the coast, uh, especially in Maifa, Dubab and a local NGO. They register the refugees and then they transport them either to the refugee camp or they can drop them off in the cities. The UN refugee agency here in Basatin is facing a tough task. They're offering refugees a number of services the Yemeni government is unable to provide on its own, from basic sanitation to rehabilitation. But it's hard to help everyone as the refugees keep coming. Yet not all of them are fleeing from the war. I have heard also that uh, there are informants and people that assist piracy that are working out of Aden, which is for obvious reasons. I mean, you have the port here. The port of Aden. Its history as a trading center stretches back over 3,000 years. And thanks to its convenient location, it used to be a strategic link in Britain's imperial communications. Aden has the largest natural harbor in the world, and it was among number three of the most important harbors on the route from Europe, passing the Suez Channel uh, towards India and Asia. And uh, so, but this reputation declined. Margaret Arning is a chief advisor to Aden's Chamber of Commerce. She first came here from Germany as a tourist. Twenty years on, she returned with a mission. Margaret wants the port to regain its importance. It is now losing millions in revenues, and piracy is playing a key role in making merchant fleets bypass this area. She says it's hard to convince people invest in the port when they hear of Aden's proximity to Somalia. When it is not possible to stabilize Somalia, how? Should you stop piracy? Europeans uh, are also involved somehow as they use the coastline of Somalia for their waste disposal. I have to investigate more what is true or what is not true. But if this is the case, and uh, let us say people in Somalia, they, they are suffering, they have diseases they haven't had before, then also this is not right. According to the UN, two and a half million people in Somalia need humanitarian assistance, while one in six children under the age of five is malnourished. Famine has been plaguing the country since the ongoing civil war first broke food distribution systems nearly two decades ago. Almost one million people fled Somalia in 2008 alone. A paradise lost by millions has been hijacked by a few.